Question 2 from 2019 Advanced Higher Physics SQA exam. Riders in a theme park attraction sit in pods which are suspended by wires and this is shown in figure 2a. Now during the ride a pod travels at a constant speed of 8.8 .8 metres per second in a horizontal circle. The radius of the circle is 7.6 metres and when occupied the pod has a mass of 380 kilograms and for three marks we're asked to calculate the centripetal force acting on the pod. Well, here we have a picture of what's happening from above, and that's the circle the pod travels in. Uh, we can see the radius r, and we can see the tangential velocity v, which is 8.8 .8 metres per second. And from our data books, we know that the centripetal force of anything moving in a circle is equal to m v squared divided by r. In this case, we know what m is. We know m is going to be equal to 380 kilograms. We know V, the tangential velocity, is going to be 8.8 .8 meters per second. And we also know the other variable that R is going to equal to the radius is going to be equal to 7.6 meters. So all we've got to do is plug those numbers into the centripetal force equation. And we have the centripetal force, and I'll just say FC, is equal to the mass, first of all, so 380 kilograms, multiplied by 8.8 .8 squared, put a little bracket around that to keep it nice and tidy, draw a line underneath that, and then we're going to have R, which is going to be 7.6 metres. So when we do that in our calculator, we end up with a value of 300, or 3,872 newtons. And we can change that into the nearest one, to two significant figures, and that will be 3900 newtons. So the centripetal force is 3900 newtons. Now part two asks us quite simply to state the direction of the centripetal force. Well, we know what centripetal force means. There's the definition of it there. A centripetal force is a centre-seeking force, and we get that from breaking up the words centripetal, centri means centre, and petal means seeking, and force is force. So the force is going to be acting towards the centre, and we can show that on our diagram here by showing the force, centripetal force, acting towards the centre, and that would be our centripetal force FC. And that would give you your one mark. Question 2, part B, I. Uh, figure 2B shows a simplified model of a pod following a horizontal circular path. The pod is suspended from a fixed point by a cord. On figure 2B, show the forces acting on the pod as it travels at a constant speed in the horizontal circle. And you must name these forces and show their directions. So here we have the pod. And that's the pod there. And the first force acting on it is the force acting on a pod, which is its weight caused by the force of gravity. So weight is acting downwards. Now the other force acting on it is the tension in the cord from the fixed point, And there's a tension force acting up there. So that's the only two forces acting on that pod. The weight vertically downwards and the tension angled at that certain angle theta there. And that's caused by the cord. And that's all you really have to say for two marks. Some people suggest putting in the centripetal force, but never do that. The centripetal force is not a force you call centripetal force, you know what I mean. It's caused by either the tension or the weight. As we'll see in a wee minute, it's caused by the tension in the cord in this situation. So to answer that question, for two marks, just state the two forces, the weight acting vertically downwards and the tension due to the cord. Question 2b, part 2. The speed of the pod decreases and we have to state the effect this has on the angle theta and you must justify your answer in terms of the forces acting on the pod. Well, let's take a look at the forces acting on the pod which we found out from our previous question. We'll draw axes around the pod so we can put our forces, show our forces. The first force acting on the pod was its weight acting straight down. And then we had the tension force to the cord acting like that. Now, we can split the tension force into its corresponding components. 
we can put in the x component of the tension, which we'll call fx, and we can put in the y component of the tension, which we'll call fy. And we know from our geometry that these are separated by that angle theta at the top. So we can draw a little angle theta in there like that. Now, it's this force fx which is causing the centripetal force. That's a very important thing to say. The centripetal force is really fx. Now, the centripetal force is going to be equal to mv squared upon r. So, that's responsible, fx, is responsible for the centripetal force. Now, there's no horizontal component due to the weight uh, force because the weight is perpendicular to the horizontal component, horizontal axis. Therefore, there'll be no component added to fx. But we do know that the, just for the sake of saying it, we do know that the fy component, the y component of the tension, must be equal to the weight to balance it out. And that must always stay the same because the weight is unchanging. So there's our formula then, fx equals mv squared. So if we reduce the speed, and because the speed has got a power of 2, if we reduce the speed which the bob is moving around at, then definitely fx is going to reduce. So we're going to get a smaller horizontal component of the tension force. We know that R is going to reduce as well, but because V is to the power 2 squared, then if we reduce that speed, then Fx is definitely going to reduce. Now, what will happen if that force is reduced in Fx force? Let's draw another diagram, the same one, but we're going to put in the different value for the horizontal component. It's now reduced, so it's now going to be like this one here, so we can now... Bring over the reduced force, there it is there, we can just compare it. The Fx is now reduced, so Fx is now there like that. But as we said, the vertical component of the tension, there's the, the vertical component of the tension there, does not change. Because that must balance the weight of the pod acting down the way. So there's no way that Fy can be reduced. Only Fx is reduced if you decrease the velocity or the speed of the pod. Now, the new tension is going to be there for like that to make up the vector triangle. Now, right away you can see that the new angle between the tension and the force is going to be a lot smaller. Just to prove that, bring that over here like that, you can see it definitely has a smaller angle now. So, by reducing the speed, Fx is reduced and therefore we have angle theta becomes smaller. Angle theta will become smaller. And we can see that in real life when we spin something down which is attached to a string. When we reduce its velocity, the angle theta it makes at the top of where it's connected will get smaller. Here's a simulation of the pod moving round in the circle. We can set it away like that and you can see the pod moves round in a circle and is attached to the top uh, with the piece of cord. Now, what are the forces acting on it? Well, we answered those in the questions. The forces acting on it are only the tension and the weight, as seen in a simulation. The weight acting vertically downwards will have no horizontal component, so for that can't contribute to what we call the centripetal force. It's only the tension of the string that causes the centripetal force, and we can see that because it's the X component or the horizontal component of the tension that gives us the centripetal force. You can see it moving around there like that. Now, we also can, we're also asked the question, what would happen if we reduce the speed of rotation? Uh, what would happen to the angle between the string and the top of the fixed point? Well, we can do that in a simulation. And our justification was, if you reduce the speed moving around a circle, you'll reduce the centripetal force, mv squared upon r, which means that the centripetal force becomes smaller. Therefore, the angle should become less. So if we make the angle, make the velocity smaller, that's what we're going to see happening. You can see definitely it's going a lot slower. You can see that the horizontal component of the tension, which gives rise to the centripetal force, is a lot smaller. And also the angle between the string and the fixed point has got smaller as well.